When I look at the last 10,000 years and how we've been doing this ritual we call drinking, I think about the way that people want to feel and the way we talk about that experience. It's so elevating, that it's so connected, that it's so sexy, slurring and bloating and headaches and hangover, really poisoning your brain and your spirit, mm -hmm. are not sexy or connected, right? It's the opposite. You've essentially created the safe option to give us what we think alcohol is giving us, but it's in a way that's actually benefiting. There are really practical ways that you can level up your energy and regulate your nervous system. And some of them have to just do with how you act every day. <laughs> Radical. Yeah. I tried marijuana for the first time when I was 30 years old. So I'm really like... I was... <laughs> I don't think I've ever said that on the podcast. <laughs> Jen Bachelor, welcome to Powerhouse Women. Thank you. I'm so excited. This is one of the interviews I've been most anticipating, I think, <laughs> just ever since our happenstance meeting at a local women's event and just understanding you and and the fact that upon our first hang, we just went into like the depths of our souls. I think we talked about past lives or something. Oh, yeah. And then you I was like, right for it. OK, great. This is like <laughs> someone who I could really spend time with. And yeah. I'm so excited to share more of the story behind Kin, which is you. your brainchild mm -hmm. and a brand that beyond the functionality, the beauty, just the energy that I feel from being a consumer before I knew you now understanding how much intention there is behind that. It's just really cool to get to share this Thank with our so community. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. So oh, it's an honor to be sitting here, truly. I, I watch all of the podcasts and all of the videos from Powerhouse Women because, you know, it's like being a founder and you know this. It's like you need an endless well of inspiration. And when you have women that are constantly showing up and showcasing not only their power, but their vulnerabilities and their soft spots. Yeah. It's like, I'm not alone in this. I can relate and I can power on, you know, knowing that we're all sort of in this together, even though we may not know each other, we're sort of totally. there for the good fight, you know? It's so true. Thank and you for what you're doing. It It's out of a selfish need and a desire for creating that community for myself. Yeah. And it's been in this season where I'm 10 plus years into entrepreneurship, we have this motto, you're not meant to do business or life alone. I feel like mm. I'm getting it on a whole new level because yeah. I just need support on another level yep. in this season. I want to take people back. So for anyone who doesn't know Kin, how do you describe where mm. this beautiful brand fits within the beverage category? Oh, gosh. Um, it's just been such a long time coming. Like I, Kin, to so many things, feels like a novel concept it feels breakthrough it feels maybe fringe or niche but when i look at the last ten thousand years and how we've been doing this ritual we call drinking especially mm -hmm. social drinking mm -hmm. i think about the way that people want to feel and the way we talk about that experience and that it's so elevating that it's so connective that it's so sexy and really look at the cold hard facts about ethanol right alcohol and you realize that wow actually it's so antithetical to all of those things slurring and bloating and headaches and hangover and really poisoning your brain and your spirit mm -hmm. are not sexy or connective right it's the opposite so i think there's just been this like cognitive dissonance for so long we forgot about it yeah and marketing does a really good job i was gonna say <laughs> plus marketing yeah. companies are good at what they do right yeah. So we're sold convinced the vision that actually isn't a rep representation of what the product actually does in the human body. Yeah. Mm. And I know you can relate to this, but I've sort of been taking an audit of everything in my life or over the last five years specifically and really 10 years if I go back on everything that I've sort of been mistrained on, mm. let's say. And around alcohol, we have a lot of brainwashing that has gone on. And so I really wanted to get not only to the root of the truth for the sake of a fact-finding mission, but also like what is true for me? What actually brings me pleasure? Mm -hmm. What is gonna bring me a sustainable joy, right? Like something that's gonna deliver a feel-good effect, something that's gonna fill me up, but that I'm not gonna have to pay for tomorrow mm -hmm. and on into the future, right? Because mm -hmm. now we're seeing that alcohol actually takes years off of our life mm -hmm. and we're all obsessed with longevity. So yeah. it just is, as we become more educated as consumers, as we find out more externally, 
And we all are on, it's seemingly, we're all all on this like self-awareness quest. Alcohol fits that equation less and less. Mm -hmm. And so it's really about the collective consciousness. And when you ask me how Ken fits into the, the equation, it's just, it's the thing we've all been waiting for. Yeah. Right? It's the thing that says you have permission to do this differently. And not only to walk away from the thing that's bringing you down, but actually to fill your body and your mind with something that's going to bring you deeper consciousness, bring you elevation, right? Vibrancy, vitality, give you the energy that you need to go out and serve your causes and yourself, like done. You know, why didn't this exist before at the bar? Mm. Right? So it feels novel, but it's, I think, been a long time coming. We were just the first to be like weird and brave enough to say like, all right, we're no one else is going to do it. Let's do it ourselves. I feel like that's a masterclass on business itself. Are you brave enough to be the weird one and the first <laughs> totally. to go for it? Yeah. And I'm excited to dig into some of the story behind the intention that's in the product because you were at the leading edge of this before people were even using the term sober curious. Mm-hmm. We were noticing, I was noticing even in friend groups and circles, just the conversation shifting. And I want you to speak to the intention that goes into the product and your background, how you fell in love with Ayurveda medicine and these ingredients, Mm. because what you've done is you've essentially created the sober, curious, safe option to give us what we think alcohol is giving us, but it's in a way that's actually benefiting the way that the mind and body work. Exactly. And it went all the way back to even before... I immersed myself in Ayurveda and honestly like that was also just a happy accident Mm -hmm. because I was sort of forcing myself at that time to define what well-being means to me right at the time juice bars were very sexy and these like sort of cleanses and work hard play hard and that sort of yo-yo that we were all on um I was very much caught up in in my own life and so it's like this isn't really working Mm. like I'm ending up at net neutral every morning or or worse and I really don't want that because Mm. I'm starting to truly invest in my mind right either through meditation or cognitive supplements I was already doing all these things for my skin et cetera et cetera and so it was like the negative returns or like I said the net neutral returns after sort of drinking all of that down the drain was it, it just it just didn't feel good right mm-hmm. and so I think at a certain point I was just saying to my friends like how do we get ahead of it like how do we progress you yeah. know uh and and they were just like dear cotton headlights but then it would just once I asked that question to myself I started noticing pockets and communities around the world Um, But especially in sort of that high performing productivity circle of people that I that I knew directly or tangentially that were using things like nootropics to get ahead in their career. Mm -hmm. I was hearing a lot about people subbing out X chemical or whatever sort of go to party drug Mm -hmm. um, for entheogens and, you know, microdosing psychedelics. And so I was like, what is happening in the fringe that I could personally test out given that I tried marijuana for the first time when I was 30 years old. So I'm really late. I was 34. Okay. <laughs> there you go. I don't think I've ever said that on the podcast. <laughs> Seriously, yeah. I was so late to this game. So I so resonate with that. You know yeah. what I mean? That I was like, it was too late to go off the rails <laughs> for myself. I was yeah, like, I'm no, just going to really dabble. Is, right? You know what I mean? I'm like, I don't have any interest mm. in doing these hard drugs to just to get somewhere. I actually like want to figure out what truly makes me tick what are the dosing like I was so curious about dosing and the sort of the chemical makeup of these things and so that curiosity drove me into really define well-being for myself and I went and studied Ayurvedic medicine like you mentioned and that was just the eye-opener that I needed yeah this is speaks so beautifully to the elemental wisdom that exists already so the Mm. the question of how do you get all of this stuff externally shifts to how do you awaken it how do you awaken that inner knowing how do you awaken the inner um architecture yeah right and circuitry that already exists to get there yeah because you can and so that was my that became my obsession uh, okay, so what was your background before starting a product company? Did you have a background in Zero. this category? I love these stories. Okay, yeah. so I, I want to hear all of it, <laughs> whatever you want to share about when was that genesis moment where you were like, this has to exist and it, I think it's a beverage. Yeah. How did that process unfold? And then 
I love to take people back to like, when was your moment? Were you like sitting with Google? How do you formulate product? (laughs) Or those early stages when it was just this vision, but not fully formed yet. Yeah. And actually, it's a really good point that I don't think I've ever discussed either is that Kim, I I never had any preconceived notion that it had to be a drink. Interesting. I actually didn't. I was like, is there maybe an an even better format for this? You know, Um, I left myself super, super open because what I was chasing was that effect, that feeling. And so what I ended up realizing in like that two years of designing and dreaming and testing, Mm -hmm. um, not only on myself, but my friends and and other willing uh, participants that there is something really beautiful and sexy about sharing a drink with someone, pouring someone a drink, um, cheersing, right? And just even the, just observing, right? Watching the carafe of water land at the table versus when the champagne comes out. Mm. You don't even bat an eye when the carafe of water comes out, right? There's just something in our peripheral knowledge that translates to the brain that says that doesn't signify anything other than hydration (laughs) unless you're really thirsty. But the champagne bottle coming out means the party can get started. We're celebrating that, right? And it doesn't necessarily have just to do with the alcohol. It has to do with the pomp, the circumstance, all of that that it carries, right? That cognitive bias. So I realized that the sensuality of sharing a drink in that format had to be at the cornerstone of what we were doing. Mm. And then we could use liquid as a vessel. It was only later having met and come across and cold called and cold emailed all these people that were the leading experts in the space. Um, And I'll break down what that space is. It was only then that I realized that actually it even is coincidentally because we're so guided when we're doing the right work. Liquid happens to be the best carrier for these ingredients sure just for it to absorb into the bloodstream exactly. and like through the mouth like yeah i i heard you speak in another podcast a little yep. bit about that yeah you know and and it's been so interesting to dig into the story a little bit in preparation for this to understand again where that intention meets intuition yeah exactly those are my favorite stories <laughs> and it just makes it even more meaningful now as a consumer of the product mm-hmm. who loved it before knowing the story but mm-hmm. okay so you start to realize it's a beverage. I know there was a massive fundraising round. I know there was so much that goes into like even where we're kind of picking the story up to where you are today. What can you share about that, about having a vision that's that big that it's gonna require a lot of backing from other people? Mm. And you're also selling a vision that hasn't fully, it doesn't sound like at this time the category had been created yet. Can you take us into that season? Mm -hmm. Well, I'll go back to something that you pointed out before is that if you want to start a business and there are a lot of question marks, Mm. right, you have the vision in your mind and you have the feeling in your mind even because, right, I didn't even see a bottle at first. I saw how I wanted to make people feel, the change that I wanted to see in the world for myself, how I wanted to wake up every day. And just having that energy really clear in my mind, Mm -hmm. had I not kept a thread, right, like a tether to that vision, And mind you, my biggest stumbling block there is drinking alcohol. So had I not skipped drinking alcohol for the sake of this experiment, I may not have had that daily sort of communication with my gut and my intuition enough to know, call this person, go and take that meeting, take that flight, maybe do that, right? It's just like that inner dialogue that I was trying to reconnect to that this project allowed me to do. But I, I think it's true for anything you're creating, right? Like, yeah. especially as women, and this is the powerhouse women, right? Yeah. How do we connect to our superpower, which is our intuitive circuitry? And trust me, you can't do it when you're when you're numbing out and when you're yeah intoxicating your system. So, can you actually speak to the yeah. science of that? Yeah. We'll we'll put a pin in the other question because I think that this is huge. I talk a lot about intuition and just my own process with reconnecting with it. Mm -hmm. And then I was sharing with you before we started to record that I'm on this 60 days into a 90 day protocol, including Mm -hmm. some microdosing. One of the interesting side effects is I just haven't really felt the call to to drink even just that once a week that I would before socially. And you pointed out that, well, of course, because I'm going so much deeper into the <laughs> connection to my intuition. Can you mm. speak to that? Because this this is actually really important for people to hear. Yes. And it, so there's the hard science behind it, which yeah. we can go into. 
Um, and then of course there's sort of that esoteric ethereal and, and, and there's a lot of wisdom around this mm-hmm. in Ayurveda also that speaks to how to truly maintain a connection, foster a connection with that sort of crown chakra third eye, right? And that's where you, you can not only get the messages, but perceive them, process them, and then act upon them, um, which is really the part that gets me super excited. But it's important to know a couple of things about how alcohol affects the system. When you are, and think about this and just in layman's terms, right? When you get a cut and you have a wound, what is the first thing that someone tells you to do? Clean it, stop yeah. it. Rubbing alcohol. Yeah. Clean it with rubbing yeah. alcohol because it it actually eliminates right. any of the baddies, any of the bacteria that might have gotten in there that can start an infection. It is an incredibly powerful, and now we call it a prebiotic, but it's an antiseptic, right? So this Gosh. idea that we're cleansing the biome, which exists on the skin or in a wound, the same biome that we connect with through the vagus nerve, right? Mm-hmm. Our gut feelings, mm-hmm. our gut biome or microbiota connects and communicates with our brain so and they say you know this is actually the the wisest yes brain because it's where the most bacteria and not only the the bacteria that's being housed there but our serotonin production a uh, majority of our serotonin production is happening there serotonin of course being responsible for everything from um really like self-presentation how you think about like how you make decisions willpower mm. confidence that's serotonin and that's made in the gut. Yeah. So that wow. psychobiota, right? The biome that's affecting your mind and, and how you think mm-hmm. along with the neurotransmitters that are enacting, cultivating, right? Growing and communicating through from the gut to the brain are incredibly, it's such a delicate system. Mm. It's resilient as get out, you know, yeah. as all get out, but it's also incredibly impacted by poisons. Yeah. Right. And it's uses yeah. as, as an enemy. So alcohol comes in, wipes the biome out. All of a sudden people are complaining. Brain fog. I don't know why. Headaches. I don't know mm. why. Bloating, obviously. But it affects the way we think. And not only that, uh, alcohol being also very addictive. It crosses the blood brain barrier, mm-hmm. creates a feedback loop in mm. the mind to tell you that even if you're only having a couple of drinks a week mm-hmm. or five or six drinks one night a week yeah you are programming your mind right that dopaminergic system that dopamine to expect that and that consistency and that pattern is rewarded Mm -hmm. so if you're doing it on a chronic basis meaning on a repetitive basis Mm -hmm. your mind is going to crave that ritual again and again and again because you've put it in that place where you're saying this pattern is safe This is what I'm doing. So we want to repeat that pattern. When Mm -hmm. we have autonomous systems, it allows us to sort of operate more efficiently in Mm -hmm. our day-to-day. And that's what our bodies try to help us conserve energy by being more automatic, right? Being an autopilot. So that's where that addictive nature of alcohol gets really dangerous because we think I'm only doing it a couple times a week. But what you're actually doing is you're programming your brain to expect it, crave it. And that's when that serotonin actually goes down and you have less willpower to say, actually, I, I don't need that. Yeah, it's it, true. When right? I'm more in a a season where it's just crept back in, right. it's harder to shut that off again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even if the, I know that's more for my highest good, it's more in line with my authenticity. Mm-hmm. So fascinating. Yeah. Even if it's just a couple glasses of wine, right? It's just so like, fascinating. like, oh, maybe mm-hmm. I need a glass of wine. But you don't. It's just your brain saying, yeah. hey, remember that thing we did last week? Let's just keep doing it because yeah. I like this pattern or it's saying maybe i need to calm down maybe i need to process an emotion and instead it's the default response is i don't want to go there i don't want to feel that i don't want to be responsible for actually meeting the needs of my physical body right now Mm -hmm. i'm going to go to the thing that we've been conditioned to see as the answer to so many things yeah Mm -hmm. well and that's the thing that we don't often talk about when because it's the non alcohol conversation typically is very black and white. It's yeah. this side of the fence or that side of the fence. And really <clears throat> what you want to pay attention to is, okay, why am I getting a good or fe- seemingly good effect from alcohol? Well, the body does deserve a rest yeah. from time to time. We've programmed our brain to believe that, oh, as soon as that cork pops, mm. that's my me time. Right. And so if you don't have a healthy ritual, that's also giving you that level of excitement that you can look forward to, to replace 
that ritual, it's going to be really difficult because our body is saying, hey, I need to regulate my nervous system. Mm -hmm. And alcohol has to, happens to also enact on GABA, which is actually an amino acid that helps us to feel relaxed, right? So it's a precursor to, to a neurotransmitter that makes us feel super relaxed. And so we need to actively seek out. Mm -hmm. You know, I always say, what's your Yabba Gabba Gabba plan for the weekend? <laughs> like now I feel like we're speaking <laughs> Flintstone. Right, we are. I'm like, what, what, what's memorable? <laughs> like, how do you have your, how can we get a Gabba, a Gabba mantra out there? Totally. Um, and make it fun and make it like engaging because yeah. we need to be active in our pursuit because it's hard out there, right? Yeah. Alcohol's everywhere. Yeah. That ritual that like, hey, Linz, let's go grab a drink. Yeah. It's not to say that, I just want to get you wasted. It's to say, I want to connect with you. Yeah. But that we're, it's so that language and that imitation is so prevalent in our society, mm -hmm. right? That it feels like it's the only option. And so we have to work actively to replace it with something more conscientious, more healthy, mm -hmm. and just as fun. Just as fun. Right? Yeah. Okay. So let's kind of pick this back up with what I was initially asking yeah. about those early stages. And I think it was perfect that we detoured into the intuition because you said like really going on this journey for yourself. And I think I want to ask, like, let's pick it up with. So was there a season for you that going out drinking, like having that sort of lifestyle was the norm? Mm -hmm. And then what was your pivot into clearing that space and connecting in with the intuition? Like how did that connection happen? So yeah. you could start to birth this vision. So again, I mean, on the business side, I could have Googled all day. I could have mm -hmm. cold called all day. I think without having that connective sense, I would have missed cues in my own life. Yeah. Right. That, hey, maybe it's time to uh, take a break, you know, yeah. and it, whether yeah. it was like a dry January opportunity or, hey, I'm prepping for something. I'm like running a marathon or any of those moments, which I had multiple. That's mm -hmm. why I say it was probably five years even before we launched Kin that I kind of ebbed and flowed yeah. around my position around this and sort of my own POV for myself and how I was going to mm -hmm. navigate alcohol and other toxic habits and people in my life. Yeah. But it's <laughs> another conversation for another day. Yeah. And it's all connected. Trust <laughs> me. It's all connected. Um, mm. But I think it was just one of those. It was one too many. It wasn't one exact. It wasn't one particular catalyst or catalytic moment. Like, thank God. Right. I, never, I didn't have any of those moments where I woke up in jail or in the hospital. Thank God. You know, but just enough of an accumulation of things in my life that I'm like, you're getting in my way and taking an audit of like, what are all the things that are getting in the way of me rising up? And I don't even know what that means mm -hmm. necessarily. Mm -hmm. I don't have it like, oh, I need to rise up so I can go get my that PhD or that corner office. Right. It was just like I was feeling emotionally stunted and self limited mm -hmm. by my own sort of proclivities around how hard I had to socialize and who I had to hang out with in order to feel like I was succeeding. So it wasn't yeah. until I was like, I sat down to an exercise and I was like, I want to redefine success for myself. And there were a number of things. I mean, um, Gabby Bernstein's books, uh, the Bhagavad Gita, a number of just like spiritual texts and self-help texts, frankly, that were like, Jen, maybe there's another way to do this. And maybe the thing standing in your way of what you want to accomplish is you. That's like such a fun moment in our personal <laughs> like growth journey. Dog it. Yeah. <laughs> like we all just felt that gut punch like, mm -hmm. oh yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, been there. You're not a victim. Yeah. You are in control of you. So start eliminating the things that you are doing that are stopping you. Mm -hmm. No one has to stop drinking. I never said anyone around me has to stop drinking. But it would just so happen that I leveled up so quickly mm. energetically in my life that people started noticing and some wanted a part of it and some wanted me to go away. Mm. Okay. Can you speak to that? Yeah. Cause we, we talk a lot about like in a personal growth journey, there's people you outgrow when you start to make, I mean, I would say changing your relationship with alcohol for a lot of people is such a radical lifestyle mm -hmm. change yeah. to others. Not so much, but it's very, it's also very triggering to those that aren't wanting to look at that part of their life. Yeah. Was that hard for you or were you kind of on this new trajectory that you were just willing to let those relationships evolve as they were meant to. It was. It was really hard for me because I immediately felt the weight of everyone else's fear of being judged. Mm. And that's real. You know, like I don't want to hurt anyone around me. I don't want to make them feel less than. If anything, I want to inspire them to do something. But, but 
everything runs through. It's like when you see something better, that whole adage of like you see your life flashing before your eyes before you die, this is and this was for me a rebirth. Mm -hmm. And people could see that. Mm -hmm. They could see I was coming to, into my own. I didn't care so much about what other people thought about me. I was happy, but like How dare you? happy. I know. <laughs> I know the audacity. Like, you have to be on something else. And like no, I just am I'm oh. tapping in, and I'm I'm feeling super tapped in, and I and I yeah. and I want you here with me, but I'm not going to do that evangelizing thing. That's going to really just annoy you. Yeah, right. Because I think that also happens, and maybe I felt prey to it a little here and there with my family. So like that's yes, always, gotta try this. That's usually the <laughs> the place where all my other intuition about like I can't change anyone. I'm like, but them. But them. maybe I can yeah. change. Them. There's a hope there. <laughs> maybe. Um, but no, I just mm. kind of just existed in the world, and I. Mm -hmm. But I think I was hyper aware, and they were hyper aware when I wasn't drinking, when yeah. I wasn't ordering something, when I was passing yeah. on the bottle, when I was, you know. And so I immediately felt the weight of that because mm -hmm. um, I don't think I wouldn't put myself in the category of people pleaser. But I am the consummate host. And the consummate host mm. is very aware. Yeah. When someone's having a good time, when they're not yes. having a good time. And yeah. so when I would see that, I would feel wickedly uncomfortable. The fact that my decisions are making someone else feel like they're not included in mm -hmm. what I'm doing. Mm -hmm. Even though everyone else around me was also drinking. Yeah. So like that was that was an observation in my own life that I'm like, if I'm feeling this everyone that's yes. trying this on for size is feeling yeah. this where are those people let's meet them can we call, uh, call come together yeah. exactly and they started coming into my life yeah in droves so you raised is it 15 million Nine, to it's initially been 19 now now it's no, the initial we we, we the initial raise we bootstrapped the initial okay, Tell me yeah. a little bit of that story because yeah. I know the fundraising was a part of it. Yes. But I really want to hear more of like the nitty gritty of the beginning stages. Yeah. Now. Well, I got really lucky. I um, had a friend, Andre Repetov, who was actually already in food and he was sort of, we all adored him and we, we would do a lot of like dinner parties in New yeah. York and we just loved his like spirit like he just loved to cook and he was always in the kitchen like trying something new and he always had a new gadget and then I come to learn and find out that he's actually like a master formulator and had 80 brands to his name though casual yeah like wow um, most people didn't even yeah. know about right yeah. um I mean he formulated like, I don't even know if I can say um things we would know things we would know yeah. um and most of them in the natural space cool. I think I can say publicly um this is this is known he helped with watermelon water which was later acquired by Pepsi Okay. Um, so there was a lot of um, really interesting things that he had been a part of. And I was like, oh, Andre, um, I have an idea for something. Uh, and I didn't even know if he would be into it. He, but he was yeah. one of these folks that understood microdosing. I saw that he was sort of yeah. living in these worlds that I was so voraciously curious about. Yeah. And I remember I took him to a coffee shop in Brooklyn and I sat him down and I had my little notepad and I just like showed him what I was thinking. I don't know. I was like, it's going to be a three part system and this. And because it was really from the get go, it was about regulating the nervous system. That's what I was trying to target. I was trying to mm -hmm. balance endocrine, lower cortisol. Mm -hmm. uh, I was trying to do a lot of things at once. And he was yeah. like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Uh, wow. This is a brilliant ingredient or that. Or what yep. about this flavor? And so there were a lot of things I felt really lucky early on. Um, he was a very honest, straight up type of player. And he could kind of tell me what he thought. And, and we ended up formally, once we decided we were going to go all in on this, and I'll talk about who the we is, um, he was all on board. He yeah. was so game. And yeah. so, you know, he kind of helped us on the side and we had our first formulation. It was once we had that. And frankly, <clears throat> once I had the trimmings of that, I also bagged a printer to get me... <laughs> A label. <laughs> we were just the things we do in the, yeah. air, the bootstrapping phase, right? I called a high-end glass company. I had them send me samples. Wow. And I pimped that sample out all wow. over town as if it was the finished product. Yeah. I mean, as if I had 100,000 bottles sitting somewhere in a warehouse. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And I did that to showcase not only to retailers and um, really to bars around New York City, but eventually to investors to say, you know, I'm ready to go to the next level. Yeah. 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 
Okay, so you mentioned we. Yes. In the early phases, I know who some of your partners are now, but when did that come into the picture? Yeah, so as this sort of idea was coming to light, I was introduced to a man named Matthew Cobble, who was sort of the original four amigos that created Soylent. Oh. Um, yeah, so it's, uh, most people, it's, it's, I mean, it's everywhere uh, now, yeah. but yeah. it had a really, really big cult following in SF in particular. And they ultimately ended up moving here to L.A. and sort of playing into these ideas of it actually was a perfect timing because it was playing into the realm of like the freelancer, the rise mm-hmm. of the freelancer mm-hmm. and people really needing to spend more time sort of on work and thinking about productivity and less time on, oh, my God, what am I going to wear what am I going to eat? Uh-huh. So they were trying to solve uh-huh. that. What am I going to eat? Let's make sure that um, what I'm putting in my body, even if it's just once a day, mm-hmm. is incredibly efficacious, nutritious, right? And so it was mm-hmm. almost like a supplement in food form. So we really understood mechanics of what I wanted to create. And more than that, he understood what it was to market something to an audience who had never been spoken to before. I mean, because that's a whole other ball game. You you can be passionate about the idea, but talk a little bit about your approach to that because that had to be a big part of the conversation early on. Yeah, it really was. And yeah. I think so with me, he kind of saw it was like a light bulb moment. It was uh, like, ooh, yes. First of all, everyone I know is trying to drink less. Two, this idea that, oh my gosh, there's a whole group of people who have never been spoken to about an alcohol-free lifestyle and never had a brand right? That tribal flag to stand behind. Mm. Oh my gosh, that's exciting. Mm. Because at, at, you know, you think about what was going on in 2016, 2017, when we were having these discussions and it was a duel through it, right? It mm-hmm. was like soda water and mm-hmm. sodas on the non yeah. menus and or Shirley temples and things like that, that really didn't have the trimmings of the Grey Goose and the Bacardis and all these brands that were spending hundreds of millions of dollars making mm-hmm. their brands very sexy mm-hmm. and all the celebrity and all that. Mm-hmm. And so, I, you know, the concept was let's make it as elevated and elegant as possible. Let's make people want this. Yeah. And then be like, oh, it doesn't have alcohol? Interesting. Huh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I want you to speak to like the product formulation side sure. because it's one of my favorite things to hear you <laughs> like go to town on another yeah. podcast is – understanding the intentionality behind the ingredients that you chose and why you chose them and Mm. how it's just giving us a better option to, again, it's kind of like get the actual effect in the body that we think alcohol is giving us, whether it's like the serotonin booster, whatever that might be. Yeah. Um, And you can kind of, if you have like a favorite child of like a product that you're just really proud of how it came together and why, but the dosages that you chose, why you chose it. Yeah. Anyone who's not familiar with the brand, like we'll tell you at the end, you can you know, even get a little discount code if you order That'd from listening to the podcast, because it really is like now that I've started to replace my it wasn't even a daily glass of wine, but I just drink it at the end of my day mm-hmm. as that moment to anchor in a celebration, the switch off from work to non-work time. Mm-hmm. And the more I've learned about like the ingredients, I'm like, oh, no, I get why. I get why I'm yeah. feeling this way. And I didn't even need a glass of wine. I still drink it out of a wine glass because <laughs> I love a fancy glass. But yeah. I want you to talk a little bit about that. Thank you. Just the intentionality. I love this question because yeah. often what we hear is, oh, Ken's trying to get me drunk. And so the analog, right? Wait, really? People say that? Well, they're like, oh, it's the most functional oh. alcohol replacement yeah. substitute. We're not trying to be that, right? So because one for one, people will say, oh, I need something to switch out my glass of wine and I want it to give me the same feeling, but I don't want any of the downside. We tried. We looked at that. Mm. It doesn't actually deliver what we want out of that occasion. And trust me, we surveyed 10,000 people on this topic by the time we launched our our second SKU. So I'm proud just to say I'm proud of all of the products we've put out into the world because it follows this logic, this idea that actually – we are a super fine-tuned instrument yeah. and there are little levers that you can push, pull, mm-hmm. and service yeah. that help us feel in our power, help us feel relaxed, yeah. help us feel all the things we actually want to feel. And not only do we feel it in the moment and not regret it tomorrow, but we can actually continue to nourish those systems, our nervous systems, our endocrine systems, even the the bliss molecules, as I like to call them, that are responsible for the perception of pleasure, creativity, 
confidence. We could do all of those things with the ingredients that exist today. Yeah. They just have never existed in a drink before. Yeah. So let's start there. Let's say, okay, what is the most disruptable social ritual so we could really showcase the power of this? Happy hour. Yeah. Without a doubt, every single person we spoke to was like, happy hour is where I fall off the wagon, drink when I don't want to drink. Mm -hmm. I drink because I'm under pressure. First date, happy hour with coworkers. I don't want to be the odd man out or odd woman out as it's often the case, I want to be able to drink something, have something in my hands, you know, and it better not be clear because I'm going to get harassed. Right. And so it's like, oh, interesting. Okay. There's already a social construct around this that I want to serve deeply. There's also the psychological effect that you spoke to brilliantly about that me time ritual. It needed to be mm -hmm. beautiful. It needed to be elegant. So beyond the ingredients, there were elements and aspects of the drink that had to hit those notes. The reason that social occasion was incredibly interesting to us from a formulation standpoint is because we discovered in our journey that the molecules, right, the neurotransmitters responsible for feeling vibey, relaxed, that switch from work to play, confident, present, dopamine, serotonin, right, mostly, and then as a byproduct of the social experience, oxytocin mm. and endorphins so dose. that's quite the cocktail it right? is it is no pun intended but truly. that's what's actually happening yeah yes and so it was like a, I was mind blown by that because mm. I was like oh my gosh anytime I ever hear alcohol and a bodily organ in the same sentence it's usually the liver yes right? yeah. it's like oh my liver is gonna suffer for this yeah no, actually your brain is very involved with that experience and so what is it that we can tap either from the plant-based herbal world, the, the world, very, very studied, right? Mm -hmm. 3,000 some odd years, world of the Eastern traditions in herbology and plant medicine, and the world of superfoods, uh, nootropics, right? Cognitive enhancers, yeah. like the world of precision biohacking. Where do these two meet? Mm. When we talk about recreation, that was a big one because nootropics was all about productivity and nine to five or even nine to nine, you know, if you're a coder. <laughs> and then Eastern tradition, it was all about Zen and health and sometimes disease fighting agents where I was like, no, no, no. I want to take this out of the hospital and out of the biohacking lab and into the bar. What does that look like? Yeah. And so what dosing do we need to consider? And what ingredients do we need to consider? What boosts serotonin? What boosts dopamine? in a sustainable way. How can I get a little energy? How mm -hmm. can I lower my cortisol? Oh my gosh, the list goes on of all the things we were trying to do. Yeah. And it turns out adaptogens were incredibly effective and hit so many of these notes mm -hmm. that we were like, that's a non-negotiable. Mm -hmm. We need to work with adaptogens for sure. We need to work with not only the most efficacious ones, but we need to work with the biotechnologists that are helping us render these more efficacious. Is that possible? We asked a bunch of labs. They told us no. They told us it was going to be super difficult to put this, the dosing, the level of efficacy we were trying to that put. You wanted. Yeah. Into like a shots, for example, into like yeah. a, a 60 milliliter pour. They were like, that's going to be damn near impossible because we have to make it water soluble. You need to, you know, coat it with a, a fat, you know, do a liposomal process to make it as efficacious. It's just never been done. And then add on top of it, making it something that tastes good that people want to consume. Exactly. Wow. And that was part of it. And again, the the guidance around this is is not lost on me, especially as I reflect. It's like, okay, someone's talking to me about liposomes. I've ever heard of, I've only ever heard about liposomes <laughs> in the context of beauty, mm -hmm. right? Because we think about our serums and things mm -hmm. and that mm -hmm. bioefficacy piece, that bioavailability piece was always about serums and pastes and things that we're getting. From the, bi from the beauty world. And I was like, ooh, I, I really don't want to make something jammy or sticky. No. Right? Gross. So like, ooh, I, I'm not going to ask people to like take the spoonful of honey. <laughs> Just chew it a little. Yeah. Or like spin it in your, you know, swirl it or stir yeah. it into your drink. I was like, I really wanted to drink like a drink. Yeah. And so we pushed hard and we found some partners that were down. One in particular that we still work mm -hmm. with. Mm -hmm. And uh, we got really, really lucky on that. But, but. To your point on the taste piece, that lipid actually makes it so that some of those bitter herbs are way less bitter. Their natural sort of proclivity towards um, the, even their earthiness or their sharp mm -hmm. taste is protected by yeah. that lipid. And so even that process that we get kept getting pushed towards 
was a gift to us to be able to say, oh, we can play with these herbs that normally people would be relegated to using pills yeah. to t- to choke back, basically. Yeah. And so we were like, all right, we're going to do the liposomal process on our active ingredients, and then we're going to incorporate fresh hibiscus and, you know, amaro flavors, clove, mm. gentian as a digestif, which is another thing we don't often get to talk about, the power of the digestive system to aid and mm. support stress and the processing of our day yeah. beyond just food clove gentian hibiscus ginger right and so bringing in this palette that's familiar tasty craveable but loaded with nutrients yeah. that was like such a big mandate for us and it took us two years to get there yeah and the intention behind how you've essentially created a product suite where there's kind of like an option for every part of your day mm-hmm. I don't know if you want to even just like quick give us the overview of, okay, if I'm doing X, which product might I want to try for that? Um, I was sharing with you my personal favorites because no one asked are Bloom, (laughs) yep, which is really like this beautiful like rosé flavoring. And then Light Wave has like quickly become my actual favorite Mm. and just because of where I'm using it in the day, I don't yeah. think I was even being more intentional then. I just wanted it, something without caffeine at the end yep. of the day. But now the more I've looked into it, the more I, I think I'm actually using them as designed, yeah. you know, for the you intended are. purpose. But walk us through a little bit of like the most popular products and why you formulated them for what intention, because this has been cool to learn too. Good. Yeah. So uh, I guess so we anchor it with this idea of the happy hour mm-hmm. elixir, so to speak, right? Are, are you for it? The High Road, which is our first baby in the lineup, it was a glass spirit concentrate. That was the best way we knew to deliver this elegant Mm -hmm. presentation of this strange liquid that we were inventing. It's just so stunning. It was in an upcycled sake bottle. It still is. But when I think about those early days, it was like breaking these barriers of like visual interest and, Mm. you know, how a non-alcoholic product should show up in the bar. And so we were like, okay, that happy hour moment. And and it unlocked so much because Mm. me having immersed myself and studied and practiced Ayurvedic, you know, philosophy and medicine was so attuned to this idea of circadian health and circadian which is a huge conversation right now big time yeah exactly when you think about light exposure when you think about what's happening with our sleep patterns sleep is very sexy right now i'm so happy for that we're here for it yes we have a couple nightcaps that are designed specifically for that but that's the idea it was like it unlocked the entire biological clock that circadian clock to us to say okay well if We are depleted of X, Y, Z, you know, bliss stack, we call it, at a certain hour. Then what's happening with us in the morning? Do we wake up with everything that we need? Hmm. But this modern lifestyle that we're all living, maybe not, right? Mm -hmm. Maybe we didn't get enough sun the night before, which meant that we didn't get enough melatonin before sleep, which means we didn't sleep as well, right? This chain reaction, you're so right. It just is a domino effect, right? Mm -hmm. It just leads to one thing or another. And so we wake up and we're like, oh, kind of groggy and I'm tired and we're rolling out of bed and we're not motivated. We think Mm. it's just psychological and we're not motivated. I'm not excited to go to work, whatever it is. But there's a lot of physiology and and chemistry involved as well to us wanting to, boom, bound out of Mm. bed and get ready for our day. A lot of that has to do with our biome. A lot of that has to do with immunity. We're a lot of us, most of us, deficient of magnesium and D3. Mm-hmm. And those mm-hmm. are the two things that actually help us to get up and at them in the morning. In fact, we should wake up with a healthy dose of serot- or of cortisol and serotonin and dopamine as well. Like those yeah. three together, cortisol, dopamine, and serotonin, it's that reward system. It's that, hell yeah, I'm me. I get to yeah. live my life. And it's that just enough jolt of like, boom, I'm feeling that power mm-hmm. within. Mm-hmm. That mm-hmm. is the healthy aspect yeah. of healthy levels of cortisol. And so it's not, I don't want to villainize that uh, hormone at all because it's useful. It's the chronic stress that keeps us in that mode of adrenal tax and adrenal max out um, that ultimately renders that hormone um, really toxic, especially for for the, the uh, fine-tuned sort of female organism. But yeah. anyway, so we created a mimosa product, for example, that helps with that. Uh, there's a clinical dose of D3 in there. So every can has a thousand milligrams. I mean, you're getting vitamin C, D, uh, zinc, turmeric, anti-inflammatory, right? You're getting, um, because we have this level of vitamin C, which we all know now, I think, uh, it's a, a well-known sort of beauty hack, 
by having vitamin C and hyaluronic acid or vitamin C and collagen, for example, you're going to be able to absorb that collagen way more due to the vitamin C Mm -hmm. that you're intaking, Mm -hmm. right? So it it actually helps the system not only absorb it, but produce it better. And so we were like, oh, that's intuitive. That's interesting. Let's sync those together, right? Let's synthesize those two ingredients so that the guest is getting the benefit of both worlds. But it's intuitive in the sense that like, you know, when to drink a mimosa, you know, if you have like a pop quiz, like when do you drink a mimosa in the morning? Perfect. That's when you drink sunshine. <laughs> so the flavor notes are there. The color therapy, the color cues are there. You know, it's bright yellow. So it's true. I was going to say, yellow. we just happen to have it. We, you can yeah. also drink it in the afternoon. There That's you allowed. go. Oh my gosh. And yeah. I do. It's my go-to. So yeah. refreshing. And so, you know, I want people to be thinking about like yeah. supplementing in a way that's very sexy and beneficial, you know, and not necessarily pop having to pop a thousand pills a day yeah. to get where you're going. Yeah. You know, one of my favorite things about you that I gathered from our very first time hanging out and talking about our past lives was when you discussed your passion for your category and seeing your competitors essentially also succeed. Will you talk a little bit about your philosophy behind that? Because it's so refreshing and I think it is such a testament to the high vibration that your company and your entity holds and Mm -hmm. you hold as a as a person. Mm -hmm. And it's the way of the future. I I mean, I just think it really is. So when you saw other brands really following your lead and doing it in their own way, some better than others, Mm -hmm. what was your initial reaction? Mm. Fear. If yeah. I'm going to be honest, yeah, like, oh my gosh, are, are we, have we positioned ourselves well? And honestly, this has all to do with the fact that we raised money and I wanted to be able to. Yeah, that's a whole different level that's of a whole accountability. Another, exactly, exactly. Accountability, mm-hmm. responsibility um, to them. So I wanted to make sure that we were doing everything we could to, to be successful. And then I quickly got over that <laughs> because what I realized was Coke would be nowhere without Pepsi, whether they like it or not. And what I mean by that is, we needed other players to enter to validate our category and to mm-hmm. say this is a category. If it was just kin in the ecosystem, it'd be like that kin weird brand that's trying to be a soda. What is it? Money, what is know. it? Yeah. yeah. And now there's a name for it. And now Target can say, hey, how are we filling our shelves with premium non elk Ultimately, or with Sprouts even already, they're doing it. Uh, the buyers will say, how are we addressing this desire for functional adult Bev? Mm. right adult beverages decidedly so dressed as such yeah that have a sophisticated complex flavor profile that are also delivering a benefit wow there's Mm. not just one brand now but hundreds of brands Mm. trying to solve that problem and i'm so grateful for it because it means that we have a seat at the table and i get so excited not only for that but because i've met so many deserving people that have told me their stories about why they're ditching alcohol for one reason or another, yeah. how it's improved their lives or their relationships, yeah. how it's changed their entire thought process mm. and how they perceive pleasure. I mean, there's so many profound reasons and stories and and uh, things that I've, testimonials that I've heard over the last six years that I just get so tickled when I see another brand come out and they're doing it so well. Because yeah. I know if I'm not serving a guest the right way, they're going to do it and that guest is going to get what they need and they're going to move forward in their lives in such a brilliant way. And so I get so tickled because I was that guest that didn't yeah. have the option, yeah. right, for so many years. Yeah. And um, I just want to see consciousness at large. I want to see the collective rise up. You know what I mean? So badly yeah. that unfortunately to my investor's detriment sometimes, <laughs> I don't necessarily center kin in that conversation yeah. I, I look to the category as a whole and i'm i'm everyone's biggest hype woman especially if you're mm-hmm. if you're coming um, with that energy with that yeah. that that beautiful vibration which um now so many of them are doing and we're yeah. learning from each other on yeah. how to do that and how not to be fearful we're toppling these sort of uh just you know tried and true, I suppose, not so true to me, but this sort of like mainstay way of, of operating in the world, which we might attribute to patriarchal uh, archetypes or not. But this idea of that mm-hmm. sort of old school capitalism, right, mm-hmm. where competition, um, that fierce competitive spirit is a way to get ahead. Mm-hmm. And really what we're seeing is that actually collaboration trumps all um, and that if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go you know, far go together. 
And that's mm. so true. It's never been more true, I think, than today. Agreed. Yeah. And you really go so far beyond just the words, the lip service of it. You know, example of you shared the story earlier about, you know, you're in Target and one of your competitors that's in Target that was having just had shared very vulnerably, like some challenges with getting traction. And you want to talk a little bit about that? Like it, I want what I, here's what I want women to hear in it. It goes so far beyond just using the hashtag women supporting women or, you know, supporting people in our space. It's like, what was your mindset in going into that conversation? Because what you did is then you took action and, and did it in a way that you can share the result. I forgot what you said, how it impacted their sales, not, not your own, but like their sales. Yeah. Share a little bit of that story as we kind of wrap up. Yeah. Well, I, I think about this a lot because there's so many like cute little mantras and you're seeing like all over uh, the internet around mm-hmm. like um, one woman's shine doesn't uh, preclude you from shining or, you know, sure. that's the gist yeah. of it. I'm yeah, like, exactly. More, way more poetic than that. Sorry, you guys. Um, but they're so cute and they're so inspiring. But then as as an entrepreneur who's under a lot of pressure and stress to prevail and, and you know, prove mm-hmm. themselves, it's like that's a really cute idea for like my day to day life, but not for my business. And yeah. actually, that's not true. And who you are, especially as an entrepreneur and founder, is who your product is, period, whether you like it or not. And so with us, being that we named our product Kin, it is about the collective. It is about that kinship, that family. And that is such a through line to everything that we do, including how we behave and how we work with our our collaborators. I don't call Mm -hmm. them competitors, especially in this sense. So when she reached out to me and she was um, vulnerable enough, and this was after we had had built uh, quite a bit of respect for each other um, across the aisle, was to say, like, look, I don't, I have no idea. Like, how do we crack this? Because we want to make sure the whole set does well. Um, but especially we, we deserve to do well. And I said, you absolutely do, you know? Um, and not only that, you make us look great on the shelf. Like I love yeah. sitting next to you on the shelf. Yes. You know what I mean? You know, when you and your girlfriend are both like looking fly and it just makes know, both of you look better. Both of you it's are like, like an amplification. <sighs> exactly. And we're like bouncing off each other's energy. And that's how we very much are in person. And so even though we're wildly different. And so I was like, it's, it shouldn't be any different with our brands. And so I said, you know what? I really think that it might be a price thing because Target is elevated, but it's still, you know, where everybody's kind of looking for a deal. I know I am when I mm-hmm. go there. Um, and I said, what if we try a collab promo where we can sort of speak to both audiences, but there could be an opportunity to sort of say, hey, we're celebrating this thing that we're doing, that we're both at Target and you can buy one, get one. Even though our pricing was different, we never called that out. It meant that if you were interested in her product, you got a discount on her product, right? Yeah. Um, and so we proved that out with this experiment of collaborating together and being able to say, look, like, you know, this category is super fun. And if you don't have your, your bar stocked with both of these products, like, are you even doing it right? Right. (laughs) You're missing out. You're missing out because there's so much to be had. There's so much texture and our products are so different, but they're very complimentary. And so it was a, it was a no brainer for us. And she, she wrote me, you know, a a week after the promo and said, we're actually seeing impact from this, um, you know, and, 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 you know, I, I brow raising impact, like yeah. notable impact. Yeah. Um, and we are so tickled by that and we continue to celebrate each other's wins. And, yeah. um, you know, I know that I'm going to go farther with her next to me. And once you check that fear at the door and also you check your ego, you center your work around who you're actually serving, which is my guest, it just falls into place. Honestly, it really yeah. does. Like we might not be making the most revenue in the category and we're not you know, um, across the ecosystem. We are in this and the retail environment. Um, but we are serving our guests better than anyone I know. And that's the longevity game, you know, for our bodies, you know, with putting better products in, but I think for our businesses too, it's one of the things I admire most most about you. Uh, something that I haven't thought about. My central nervous system is not at all wrecked. In fact, it's elevated and supported by behaving in that way and doing business in that way. Like I get so excited. I am so happy that I can be helpful because you know what? I'm just Jen Bachelor. I'm just an individual, right? Like my board or the life can decide that I no longer have a role here tomorrow, but I'm so proud of the way that I just showed up for myself, for people, for my audience, for my friends. Um, and that really, really matters. You know, I've seen a lot of people come and go and, and uh, cross over in the last 12 months. I've lost a couple people in my life. And 
you realize when when you see someone on their deathbed, like that energetic imprint is real. Like that's real. And whether it's felt by those closest around you or even you, it echoes, it reverberates when you're gone, right? You leave an imprint. And so what do you want that imprint to be? It's, it's really important. You know, it's something that gets left out of like the biohacking conversations. Like so true. Biohacking and, and longevity and self-optimization is self-optimization is so often about the inputs. What pills are you taking? Well, or even like what cryogenesis right what chamber new tool yeah what's a new tool yeah, what's a new gadget. technology uh-huh. and you so often forget that like hey there are really practical ways that you can level up your energy and 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 regulate your nervous system and some of them have to just do with how you act every day <laughs> radical <laughs> yeah well, newsflash <laughs> well i feel like let's give everyone a little a little boost and share uh there's a discount for anyone yes. who's listening to this who wants to give Kin a try. Again, if you care what my faves are, if this is like an, a Lindsay's favorite things, Bloom and Lightwave, yes. life-changing. We'll put the all the links and stuff in the show notes. I okay. don't have the discount code handy, but we'll make sure it's all linked there for people. What, how else can we support you? Mm. Thank you for asking. You know, I think because I have such a personal mission around continuing to innovate and break barriers, it's just reach out to me directly. Tell me what you're thinking. Tell me what you want to see next. You know, like I get so much fuel from people living their lives and then just reflecting and also like geeking out and getting excited about what they want to see next. Just share with me. That that to me is like the most profound thing. It gives me so much inspiration and energy to keep going when I hear people's stories create with me. I'm constantly collaborating, not just with other brands, but with people and artists and women, especially like, um, it's sort of my first go-to. I want to go first go-to event planner, photographer, designer, accountant. It's going to be a woman. Um, and so if you have any of those skills, reach out to me. I love it. I just want to connect. I love that. Okay. So final question is, is one you indirectly answered already, and I'll give you another opportunity to really acknowledge yourself. We just end with asking the guest to Hmm. take a moment to acknowledge yourself for something that maybe you haven't acknowledged, something you're proud of, Hmm. a way you showed up that you just really want to take a moment to be like, yeah, I did that really well. I'm really proud of myself. Hmm. We just call it a powerhouse moment Hmm. and it can be anything big or small. I love to just like let intuition guide and say like, well, if I were to ask what's a recent powerhouse moment you want to celebrate, what's the first thing that comes to mind? Oh, this week on Monday, I had an opportunity to really show how I've evolved as a leader. Mm. And um, it's not really quick. Forgive me. This will probably be a two minute rant. I will take all two minutes. Okay. <laughs> I used to be allergic to conflict. I used to be really mm. worried about how I was going to present because I'm, uh, I come from a family where conflict, um, we would either hit it head on and be very loud about it. Combative. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and that is sort of a trope of, um, he's funny that, right? Being, I'm yeah. Cuban, so yeah. we're always fiery. And, yeah. Uh, but very true in my household. And um, <laughs> either we would sort of combat things and sort of be very um, forceful about them or um, lock them away. And it depended on the nature of them. Uh, it depended on the severity. But never did we have or did I learn from home how to communicate vulnerably, how to communicate mm-hmm. clearly. And without sort of that emotional weight and residue that comes Right. Yeah. With like, you feel this very, very much. (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Um, What are without the? What are people going to think? Without the, how can I win? uh, Without all of that, or how can I not on the on the opposite end of the spectrum? How can I um, avoid hurting someone's feelings? For me, cultivating grace and cultivating clear communication is a gift, not only to me but to the person I'm communicating with. Mm -hmm. And I've worked on it so hard in my business the last five years, and I saw it in action. I almost had like a third body. Were you observed yourself in it? Yeah. Whoa. And I just sat and I and I calmly and genuinely called someone out on their shit. Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> and um it just had to stop it was one of these things that i was doing and i was having side conversations with other members of this group and uh they were sort of getting fired up and and i said what am i doing if yeah. i want this to change i have to address it 
And I have to do it in a way that I get what I want at the end. Yeah. <laughs> With the person who can actually make that change. Yes. And not manipulate them. Mm-hmm. Tell them exactly what I'm thinking and why. Mm-hmm. Listen to them and then know I was heard and mm-hmm. then come to a resolution. So it was mm-hmm. all these things that I had mm-hmm. done successfully in different pockets of my life and career, but mm-hmm. never in one conversation that was sort of contentious. Yeah. And, and I just, and it was a 90 minute conversation. So it went a little probably longer, but we were overdue for a chat. And so I welcomed every minute of it and listened to every word he had to say. And then I got to speak my mind and I got to reassert myself in a way that wasn't clambering. And yeah. just, it was just so, it was delivered in such a way that he walked away empathizing with me wow. and wanting to be on my team. Wow. And wanting to support and wanting to apologize for not seeing what he could have seen before. And the relationship dynamic healed in that moment. Mm. I could feel the healing happen. Mm. Uh, And it felt really good. It felt really adulting. (laughs) It's so adult. I think most of the things that I am proud of in this season have to do with witnessing the growth in my ability to communicate, to advocate for my needs, and to keep my true authentic nature of grace and love in the midst of it. Yes. It's so hard to do. It's really hard to be soft and firm at the same time, but keeping that and cultivating it. To me, it was was something I had to work so hard on. It was something I had to exercise in my Mm -hmm. own life and sort of clumsily do it until I could then see myself um, delivering that. And and I feel like I'm speaking in um, generalities here. So if there's anyone that wants to like talk a scenario through with me directly like let's do it because I feel like this is kind of a superpower right because women for so long have had to like rah rah and like battle for their overcompensate overcompensate and I think lose connection with our true power and gifts as women yeah Yeah, exactly and sort of lean into the masculine order to get Mm -hmm. it done and Mm -hmm. I didn't do any of those things Mm -hmm. in this in this particular instance and I want to sort of keep figuring out how I can do this because it felt more like Honestly, it was momming a little bit. <laughs> I mean, talk about a real superpower, though. <laughs> yeah. But doing it in a way that mm. like the, the person felt nurtured almost and they were actually being told. So, yeah, I was like, damn, if I would have learned this in my 20s, girl. <laughs> but we have it now, right? Yeah, we have it. Yeah. OK, that's so worth celebrating. And I agree. I'm so grateful for you. Me I'm too. grateful for the work that you're doing Me and just too. More than anything, your friendship and just getting oh. to be in your world and and be impacted by that in your leadership. So Ditto. thanks for coming and like, stopping by the pod. Thank you for having me. I'm so grateful. Oh my gosh, Ditto. I, I've said, I said it at the top and I'll say it to close, but the stuff that you're doing, the way you're doing it mm. is the other thing, is so electrifying, mm. you know, and we need that. Like where else do we get fuel? Outside of my, my morning coffee or my kin spritz, like that to me to see other women like stepping into their power. Yeah. And we were saying it. What was the word we kept using? Expanders. Yeah. When we were together. Oh my gosh. To know that you're expanding mm-hmm. for others and being, you know, a, being a model for that mm-hmm. and then igniting that in, in themselves. Those mirror neurons. Yes. I mean, that is your product. That is your superpower. Yeah. You know? So anyway, keep going. My quote is always just never stop. Never stop mm-hmm. doing you. I love that. Thank you.